Today I'm going to talk about a Martini Henry. It's a 0 .577 450 calibre. Uh, it's made by Brendlin Armoury in the UK. Uh, it's got an interesting story and it's a very well travelled rifle. Very briefly, uh, it was made in the UK and shipped out to the ZAR, which is the Transvaal or South African Republic, prior to the Boer War. Now in Dr Ron Bester's excellent book, uh, Small Arms of the Anglo-Boer War, he mentions that there were two carbines that they found uh, that were actually submitted by the Brendlin Armoury. Uh, they think they could have been samples. So whether this in fact was a sample sent out to the Transvaal for testing or whether it was a private purchase, I don't know. But as far as well travelled is concerned, um, in 1902 after the, uh, the peace conference, this rifle was handed in. It was sent over to Australia as a war trophy. Uh, many years later, the, the gentleman who owned the rifle uh, passed away and the rifle was sold in auction. It was bought by a well-known American collector and shipped from Australia over to America. Uh, the, the gentleman's name in America is a well-known collector called Mr. Mike Carrick. Uh, Michael uh, actually sent a photograph of this rifle to me and it appears on page 40 of my part two book, Carvings from the Felt Part Two. Well, after having received the photo, uh, myself and a, a local fellow called David Parkin went to a lot of trouble trying to find out a bit more history about Tom Parkin, who was the owner of the rifle and also the history of the rifle, where it had come from. We sent all this information over to, to Mike Carrick and some years later he decided to write to the, the owners of the property which is called Pine Grove, which is where Tom Parkin lived, and said to them, listen, this is a historic rifle. Um, I bought this on auction. Um, I believe it's an Australian, uh, historic Australian rifle. Uh, would you like to buy it back from me and keep it in the family? Well, uh, it was very good of Mike to do that, and unfortunately, uh, to the best of our knowledge or memory, uh, he did not receive a reply. So sometime later, Mike wrote to me and said the same thing. He said, Dave, uh, you know, this is a historic rifle. Uh, it's got a lot of Australian history. Uh, I think it should go back to Australia. Would you like to buy it? So uh, I was overjoyed and it was very kind of him to do so. And uh, yes, I bought the rifle, and I'm very pleased to have it in my collection. So. After all those years, the rifle was sent back from America to Australia, so it's done a fair old run around. Now, as you know, I like rifles, uh, Boer rifles or British colonial rifles with names on them. In this particular instance, uh, it's written upside down, but I'll read it to you. Surrendered rifle from the Anglo-Boer War, South Africa, 1902. Captain T. Parkin, VMR, and that's Victorian Mounted Rifles. Now, it's been quite heavily carved into the butt and then it's been inlaid with white paint. Now, Tom Parkin um, was born in 1870. Um, he was the son of Mr. John Parkin. He was a, 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 an English gentleman from Cornwall who came out to Australia in 1857. He went to Victoria and he went to the small town of Kingston where he opened a hotel. And later on, he bought the property which became known as Pine Grove and he became a grazier. He was also a, a, a town councillor for, for Creswick Shire Council. Well, he raised seven children on that farm, and the second uh, child was uh, Tom Parkin. Tom went to the Creswick Grammar School as well as Geelong Grammar School, which is near to Melbourne. Uh, he excelled at sport, was the uh, team captain for the football team, and he also played cricket and was a very keen rower. He ended up being the head prefect for Geelong Grammar School. Well, along came the Boer War in 1899, and many of, the, uh, of his schoolmates joined up Victorian Mounted Rifles, and uh, Tom was certainly no exception. He joined up in April uh, 1900 and uh, was made a lieutenant, probably because of his uh, excelling at sport uh, during his school days, I would imagine, and also from the family he came from. Uh, they departed the very following month in May 1900 and arrived uh, at a place called Baira in uh, Portuguese East Africa on the 23rd of May 1900. They made their way from, um, from Baira through uh, Portuguese East Africa to Rhodesia. They got as far as Marindellas in Rhodesia and then they moved south into the Transvaal or the ZAR, Paul Kruger's country. Uh, the Victorian Mounted Rifles took part in many operations in that area. Uh, the Western Transvaal especially became a real hotbed. It was under the command of General Quirce de la Rey, who was uh, called the Lion of the West. And the particular story I'm going to tell you about today involves um, Delaray, uh, who was actually lying in wait for a British column. Now this column was under the a British column was under the command of Lord Methuen. He was completing a drive, one of the big drives which he had, uh, trying to drive the Boers up against the blockhouse lines. 
and he was on his way to Klerkstorp, which by the way is in the Transvaal. Now the place in question is called Hartebeersfontein. Uh, it was quite a pitched battle, they believe there were between 1500 and 2000 Boers and approximately the same number on the British colonial side. The British side mainly, uh, were mainly uh, yeomanry troops as well as Australians. Uh, the Victorian Mounted Rifles, including Captain Tom Parkin, or at that stage a lieutenant, uh, took part in the, in the operation. Uh, they had to go through a port, which is a pass through very uh, mountainous country. And on either side of the actual road were crags and precipices and crances, and the Boers had dug themselves into these positions and hidden away behind the rocks, etc. And of course, opened fire on the column. Uh, a pitch battle ensued, and uh, at some stage of the game, uh, Parkin was badly wounded. Now, I'll tell you exactly what is said from an account of the period, and if you'll bear with me. Uh, Lieutenant Tom Parkin had a marvellous escape from death. He was stooping forward when a bullet struck him just over the heart and went through a map he had in his pocket. The map partly deflected the bullet, and after leaving a slight wound in his chest, it glanced off downwards, went through his trouser pocket, and buried itself in his leg. In his pocket were a knife, a steel chain, and a large key. The bullet smashed up uh, the key and the chain and drove pieces of them into the wound, making it a very bad and painful wound. Uh, a Captain Purcell was, was nearby and he built a little stone sanger around Parkin to keep him protected from bullet fire. Uh, Tom Parkin was later carried away when the shooting had ceased. He was sent over to the UK uh, for um, attention of his wounds. The battle at Hartebeersfontein was quite a costly one. Um, the cost to the British and Colonials were a total of uh, 15 men killed in action and 34 wounded, including of course Thomas Parkin. Once he'd recovered from his wounds in the UK, he was sent back to uh, Australia. He never went back to Australia, to uh, South Africa actually, he went directly home. And in civil life after the war, he did quite well, as he had done at school. He became a councillor for Creswick Shire Council, as had his father. So Tom Parkin was to spend 33 years as a local councillor. He then went into politics, uh, became a member of the Legislative Council, which we will show you. Legislative Assembly, I mean, which we shall show you. And he also became a prominent grazier. Uh, he took part in agricultural shows. He became a judge. Uh, certainly, he was an important uh, part of the community. Uh, it so happens that his younger brother, a uh, certain John Parkin, uh, slightly younger than him, didn't make the Boer War, but he went on to fight in World War I. Uh, John Parkin was in the 4th Australian Night Horse and took part in the famous charge of Bathsheba in 1917 in Palestine. This is where the light horsemen uh, were only armed with .303 SMLE rifles and Patton 1907 bayonets. They didn't have swords and uh, the horses hadn't had water for over a day and neither had the men. They knew the Turks were holding the wells so they opened uh, up in a, in a great big line and charged at the Turkish positions with their bayonets. Uh, as I said, John Parkin was part of that um, and he ended up being a major in World War I. After the death of Tom Parkin, and he died in um, 1936, uh, his younger brother John Parkin went on to become a uh, councillor for Creswick Shire. And in total, the father and the two sons had clocked up a total of 81 uh, years being councillors uh, for their local Creswick Shire Council. So that's the story about this well-travelled martini, Henry, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.